so if the microphone was on, so I had to check that thing. Okay, and just so you understand, my screen is right here, and then the camera's right there, so if I'm looking over here, it's because I want to see the comments, and I need to see if I'm in the right place. I hope y'all doing well, okay, because I feel like I haven't seen you in a month or something, if nothing has ever changed. But nonetheless, we're going to get started, because I miss you guys. How was your Thanksgiving? Was it good? Was it okay? Did you cook? Or did you go to your family's house? Did you take a dinner? Or did you take a whole box, a whole bunch of boxes home? To go box that eat. Okay. Um, my Thanksgiving wasn't good. It wasn't good. Good food, good company. We're gonna we're gonna get started though. And what I'm gonna do is Foil down. Did I pull out foil? Y'all, who didn't tell me to pull out foil? But uh, normally I do. And now the real question is, sister duck, do we have foil? <laughs> oh, glory. Has it been that long? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Okay, well, we're just going we to move forward because... Ain't nobody wasting time tonight, okay? We just gonna wipe our senses. Get it in with all my Christmas decorations. Okay. Did y'all decorate? Did y'all deck the halls with bounds of holly? Okay. <laughs> Fall la la. A glory. <laughs> all right. And then what we'll do. Okay. Hello, you was tucked over in the corner, Julia. Hey, how you doing? Okay, let's dampen our little cloth. Dampen it just a little while. Not too much. It doesn't have to be soaking wet. Just damp, dampen it just a little. It's just thick. Y'all, we at the end of the year. Help us, Holy Ghost. Give us physical basketball. Oh. Okay, you want to rub that thing on your hand. And you know what else I don't have? Y'all, I'm not prepared. Clearly, I haven't done this in a minute. But it's close by, okay? Because we had to take things down for Thanksgiving. Definitely do do that. We're not taking down the decoration, but uh, we need to have it nice and handy. Or I don't know. We'll just we'll just put it behind us for now. bit. All right. Now, the first thing we want to do is get our chicken in the oven. Okay. So, we want to get that going. We want to find the amount of child potato so that we can fry them. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Y'all. Let me get my life. I'm going to get my life together. We're going to make our drink ready. Okay? Please hold, please. Please hold. We got our little steak and stuff. Okay? Because we need 
some kind of some kind of moment. Our mason jar was in the freezer. Fill it with some ice. I feel like I look like a bum. So <laughs> so this is the thing. I'm standing behind the counter and I was like, oh, the judges on the corner ain't gonna see my bottom. They just gonna see the top. Clearly. Alright, mason jar, a little ice, a little water, a little uh, crystal light wild strawberry. Y'all know the, the same thing every time because that's what my spirit says. Now, if your spirit says something else, it do that now. Okay? You better drink what you make. This is good. It's good for me. And that's the way I am. It's good for me. All of that. All of that. Give me all of that. We gonna go in this little frick bag. And let me see what's in here. Yeah. We got some orange and we got some lemon. I got a little squeeze. Let me see what this little jar is. Jeff pineapple. That's what I'm using. Ooh, that light is bright, man. Hold on. I'm going to give you the corner so I can see it. That light is super bright. Oh, here we go. That's what I'm using. Jeff pineapple. I got to remember to show y'all what I've been using. Okay? Is it better? had a very busy week, so this drink, Jesus, is going to bless my life. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, I work for a specialty center for uh, called the Center for the Arts, and I'm at the special education, so I do uh, lighting, sound, graphics, we did set design, and because we are in, let's throw you another one, because we're in COVID, you know, students are doing virtual learning, and so what's special about this center is that they allow the students to get on stage and perform, and we call them the artists or what have you, um, and so uh, that we had to have a, a showcase had to have a virtual showcase and we did a lot of work so uh, that went very well a lot of a lot of sitting at the computer and editing videos and but we got it done and so oh come on Lord I don't know where the top is can you can you let me see what you have in here oh you got to put strawberry raspberries Jesus the color we need the color and it's only a little bit of this left. We need this. A little bit of this. We need a little bit of some of this blue. We need some of this pink. Yeah, that's not blue. That red is not blue. That shouldn't even be on there. We need to press hard and loose. Woo! A little too hard, Jesus. <laughs> that was a... <laughs> that was a... <laughs> <laughs> Let's give this one to him. Let's give this one to him. No, 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 no. Oh, I had the perfect one and I popped it. Urgh. Wait. I don't know where the rings are. But we need this moment. Y'all pray for me. Find the rings, Jesus. Uh -huh, I found a ring. Thank you. Get on in there. Loosen. Loosen, God. Loosen. Okay. Nonetheless. I can't loosen. 
Amen. Amen. Now, you know, I normally just go ahead and, there we go. I normally just drink on up out of here. Okay, Marsha. No. Oh, go ahead, girl. I have it all to myself. Now we don't even have to use the cup because we're just going to go on with glory. Okay, dear. Okay. Let's take it. Conjurer. How are you? Jedior, how are you? Uh, shaker, shaker. No. I'm, this is well deserved. This right here. Okay. Well deserved. Well deserved. Okay. Bless it. The rapture, Jesus. Okay. Y'all, so this week while I was working, I was like, Mom, I brought some tuna fish. Can you make me a tuna fish sandwich? Y'all know that was the best thing of my life. This whole week it just tear me through. Oh, Jesus, it was so Okay. All right, my friends, like, wait, wait. Let's get some more fresh fish and cut this fish up. Okay. Mm. Holy Ghost. What are we going to do since we made a little room? Make a little room, make a little room, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Made a little room. <laughs> Got to make the room. Got to. Oh, wait, hold on. We can go back here. Hold on. Oh, my goodness. made it for several other people. They think it's good. Do you agree, Dejoy and Tondra? Because they done had it. Okay. We got some chicken breast here. Y'all, I went to Food Line. Food Line was barren. I don't ever go to Food Line unless I'm coming from Charles City. Charles City, where y'all food at? Where the meat at? Because me out. Food Line. Quentin. If y'all notice, I cook with a lot of the same, like, ingredients, but you can do a lot of different things with them. So, you know, like a bee. <laughs> you said you didn't die? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> I hope you didn't die, you typing. Now, the question was, was it good? Okay, because the saints of the, of the Lord need to know. Because they're going to be like, this man feeding us last from the pit. I'm going to be like, no, man. That thing is delicious. All right, we got a pan here. We got our little cookie rack thing here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to transfer this drag. Are you excited for the coming of the Lord? 
for Jesus. Uh, for hey, come on, glory. Jesus is the reason for the season. Yes, he is. Oh, yeah, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Uh, I don't need <laughs> material things. All I need hey, is the love he brings. Oh, is it joy? This holiday. I came to say that Jesus is the only way. Did y'all know that? Jesus is. Come on, Kirk. All right, we got a little extra virgin olive oil, or as um, Rachel Ray would say, some EVO. Okay, let me make sure. <laughs> now I'm going to say, why are you so? How you know? How you know? Cause it's cold and it's keep it's warming me up. Okay. All right. So a little extra virgin olive oil. We just gonna sprinkle it on the top. Okay. Just sprinkle it on the top. All right. And this is a trick I told to my cousin and I believe my aunt as well. When you feel like you over season, like you over salt your your meat and your your products and things, just do one side. Then rub the other side on this side, and then you have a nice. Um, you don't you don't over season, and then when it's time to eat it, if it's not, it should be like there. But if it's not, then you just you know sprinkle a little salt and pepper at the table, okay. Okay, so we put our extra virgin olive oil on. We rub that on both sides. When we put it on one side, we're going to come in with this lovely pepper, coarse black pepper. Okay. And then some mouth, because remember, we're only seasoning one side. Then we're going to rub it. Rub everybody together. Do a little dance. Uh-huh. And uh, season the other way. One way is one side. Then we're going to get this beautiful. You are a ray of sunshine, Deborah. Yeah, I'm in a singing mood. This is blessing my life right now. Oh, thank you. Y'all, I'm so tired. Okay. But uh, I, again, the showcase was great. The showcase was great. I'm so proud of these kids. The kids are amazing. Okay. Mm, and so is how rude. And so is that drink. Wipe that off. Okay, off the table. Okay. Okay. Salt and pepper. Let's have a rub moment, a little party. Hey, rub on me. Rub on me. Okay, so we just kind of rub it up. And we're going to move all the chicken around. Everybody get to touch everybody. Okay. That's what that moment is all about. Then it's evenly. also going to do some smoked paprika. I'll, and again, I use the same things, but just do them in a different way and um, get, a, a, get a different result. Okay, y'all seen me roast chicken before. So we're going to go in. We're going to go in with some smoked paprika. That's what that is. This is organic smoked paprika. Okay. And this camera doesn't autofocus, so I'm sorry. Shake it on down, shake it on down, 
So I have to like crack the whip because theater showcase is next week. We got some work to do. Okay. All right, that was smoked paprika. We're gonna do some garlic powder, onion powder, do garlic powder. Oh, and I'm gonna tell you what we're doing this for. Okay, one, I'm gonna take two brasses and I'm gonna um, make a small little bowl of chicken salad because that's what I want. I'm gonna take three of these and I'm gonna spread them up because uh, family dinner is going to be a potato bar. Yeah, so I was like, well, we can do a little shredded chicken to go with the potatoes. We got a, a pork chop that needs to be cooked up, so we're going to speed those up and then cook those and then put the little pork chop on the potato and the pork chop on the potato. Then we have shrimp, so we can do a little shrimp with pork chop. Okay, so we're going to rub all this together. So we're going to have a potato bar for Sunday dinner. Um, and I think this, I the, the best thing about COVID for me, and I think I could speak for my family, is that it has brought us so much closer together. We uh, started doing family dinner so that we can stay safe. And when I share this with you, I'm not sharing this so you can be like, ho, 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 come and get the ho. No, <laughs> I'm sharing this because we do stay we do stay uh, safe. We we encourage um, our listeners to uh, do COVID testing often so that you uh, so that we are all safe. Um, because after this moment, we go to our our individual homes and just like you, even if you don't try to encounter everyone you know, or encounter the entire world, you still encounter the entire world. You go to the grocery store, or you go to uh, get some gas or what have you. So um, we just want to make sure that you do, and you can still get COVID tested often as well. Um, so that's, that it just, it brought our family together. I can tell you that. All right, we're almost there. I promise. McCormick season that I use all the time. All right, I use it all the time for everything. That's why we have a big, a, a big container of that. Okay, and this is going to be an Adam Walsh brownie. Okay, how rude. do is, now it starts to slide in your hand. You have to get it to a point where it starts to stay in one place and it starts to come off. It's circular motion, just giving it a similar pressure. It starts to make it a finer powder. And then we're just going to do that powder all the time, all the time, all the time. All right. Now, you can do this you can do this in a bowl. I think the bowl method would be a little easier, but I just didn't want to build up a whole bunch of things. So I just figured I would do it on a tray and just let it rest for a bowl. But if you do it in a bowl, the, the seasoning process and the rubbing on one another will just be a little easier because as you can see, it's a little seasoning under the rack. So that's fine. Handy. Okay. All right. So our cheese. What? What is it? Our chicken, <laughs> I don't know what I was saying. Our chicken has been seasoned. I think I was combining chicken and seasoning together. <laughs> but nonetheless, okay, we just started drinking the drink. We ain't can't get on it yet, okay? All right, so 
So these have been laid back out. I have a 350 degree oven. We are going to take this lovely pan in the oven and we're going to let those go to town. Now, the oven was on broil for at 500 for like a long moment. And I just switched it over to 400 just because the oven was really warm. cooking at 350 while this is in the oven. So I turned the oven to 350 so I can throw out the pan in the oven. Okay, let's clean up the space, rinse our hands. Did y'all share and like this video? Okay, so I'm, I'm about to put that graphic up there because, I mean, y'all just was talking to me and sharing on, but did you share? Did you like? And um, greetings to the YouTube world. Hey, YouTube, you on there too. What's happening, girl? Okay. So we're on Facebook and YouTube. Let me take the lights off y'all so y'all can see the right way. moment so go ahead and do that let me watch you let me let me watch you while you do that go ahead do it do it <laughs> okay come on holy ghost hey wrapped it somehow okay so let me but until then thank you <laughs> okay, so we need some chicken salad, so we need a few things in the oven. Um, this is my favorite part for that though, for the pretzels, so we'll get the pretzels, we'll remove some vegetables. This is why the chicken grease are done, are packed. So we're going to go ahead and get him and peel it. We're going to get him some chicken. I'm going to bring my little over-the-counter moment back to a point so we can see what we're doing here. 
great you buy yo. Okay. Come on. So sorry. Work. So we're gonna go. Level nine. I don't need to go all the way because this is a big onion, so we're definitely not going to use all of it. I feel like I'm using too much of my toddler because it's super tiny. Okay, we go that way. Put this down. Marsha girl, what you doing, girl? <laughs> it sounds a little bit more sassy about it. You need some light? It won't be a good night, Keith. I've just wiped it off. <laughs> you see it? Do you see it? Because you're laughing like you saw it. <coughs> I put it in the thing. I did. <laughs> I wiped it off and I put it in the clean dish. Look at God. Look at God. Won't he supply? Yes, he will. Uh, where's the sharpener, Jesus? You know what that is? You lying. You lying. <laughs> Look in that drawer right there. It, it's not right there. Oh, y'all, since Thanksgiving, we done misplaced a lot. go run our knife through this. What? We're just going to keep on going. We're just going to go back and forth. Nonetheless, it's sharp enough. It's cutting. Uh-huh. There's an option for that. Because what you don't want to do, and what I don't want to do, is bite into a large piece of onion. Ew. And, and raw. Ew. Okay. Lightly. Now, when you do this, after you go through it a couple of times, because what? Because now I'm starting to feel it. Okay, we're gonna have a little peel on it. So. Marsha, come here, girl, for a second. Come here, come here. Let's have a conversation. I'm just going to invite you in. Come on into the room, Jesus. Come on, Marsha, get. You ain't doing nothing. Where you at, little lady? <laughs> you tired or not? <laughs> I'm tired, too, girl. I am tired. Okay. So... Um, so we lost our heat th this week. We did. And it was just, we, we've been in, we've been in, uh, over 10 years. 10 years, girl. Going on for 10 years. So 10 years, you, 
just anticipate something going down. And so um, thank God for a ram in the bush to give me a little bit. But nonetheless, I experienced Jesus. But y'all, I, I just kept saying, I don't understand how people who just used to just like, and y'all had to do it. Y'all live with a, y'all live with a show. That's all you had. Just one. And y'all had a two-story house. Y'all, we got a three, three, four-story house. You see what Jesus say? I'm not bragging, but we got to keep the house. We had to keep the house warm. And I was like, and because I've been working on the the showcase project, um, I've I've been up like super late, and so I was like, well, I got to keep the fire going, and we have a real cast iron stove. We ha- that's what it's called? A buck stove. Okay, a buck stove. And uh, thank God for, for family and for friends and for church members that love me. I'm a member of the music, and so they, they uh, help us out with the wood situation at times. Um, there was a, a tree that fell in my sister's yard or was cut down, and so we had large, large discs of wood. And uh, so I had to chop it up. And it's been in the yard for a, a year. You can't give it to us at the beginning of the year. Pastor, get this. Y'all, I had to chop that wood with an axe. Okay, with these delicate piano hands, Jesus. And I didn't take my rings off. And I know y'all can see. Y'all see that blister? Oh, and there was a blister right here. I had to take the ring off. I got blisters chopping wood. Who used to chop wood for y'all? All of, all of y'all. You had to chop wood too. Chop wood, straw wood, and the And my mama not that old, y'all. water from a well with a, a icy rope but it had to be done we that's how we live like you said we had two-story house we had one heater it kept downstairs warm so did y'all okay who y'all put the fire y'all put the wood in the heater too the kids no when Pop we were it. children my father would put the wood in the heater uh-huh. but as we grew up as we grew then you we you, had to learn how to do it and it was a lot of them. It was a lot of them. So they had... Okay, so what did y'all do at night? Who would get up? Papa. Not a soul. No. It would go out. It would, it would go out. It would go out. And my grandmother was always the first one to get up in the morning. So she would make a fire. Martha. Martha. Come on, Martha. She would make a fire. <laughs> so, yeah. And you call Martha Mama. We call her Mama. And my Mama, we call her... S I N G. Sing. I love some sing. I love me some sing. That was that was our. I mama was our mom. Sing. And my mama, she was our mom, but she was sing. But she was sing. And when my grandmother passed, we started we call calling her. my mom mom. Y'all, so over the over this, I think more so over this weekend. I think it was this weekend and last weekend. The my age group, we started talking more about family mm-hmm. like back then mm-hmm. we we talked a lot, about, a lot about it so and i want us to have a conversation with y'all mm-hmm. just a, just a little circle moment mm-hmm. just so we could talk because now now like jonah and cam and all of them they need to know that too yeah. you know i think it's important but i you know it's important it's important to know where we come from my mother came from my mother's family was from Ashland, Hanover area, and then we transitioned to Richmond, to right? Henrico. To Henrico. Okay, but we're from we're from Ashland, um, Ashland, and this is Ashland. So the center of the universe. Center of the universe, say. as they say. But um, I just experienced that, you know, just this week because our heat went out, and thank God, thank God that we have a fireplace, and we. God has blessed us and we stay warm. Okay? 
and, and we're not complaining, you know, but I just, I want to thank you, girl, because even, even not growing up back then, you know, I've learned a lot. I learned a lot from my aunts and uncles and from my grandmother and my grandfather because we used to live, when I was small, I used to live in the house, when, you know, with my brothers and sisters, my mom and my grandmother and my grandfather. So we would, I would see things, you know, my, I would help my grand, my, my grandfather, uh, you know, when he built a deck in the backyard, uh, 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 in the back of the house and, you know, small little things when he built the shed. I remember, Sean knows so much as well. Sean knows so much. Sean has a great memory. Sean has a great memory. Like, things that I can't recall, Sean can recall, and then it helps my brain. I just don't have a good memory at all. But um, it's just the small things. I remember the first time when we were staying on Delmont. I remember the first time y'all took out the old iron. You remember the old iron? The um, one you put on the stove. The one you put on the stove. Do you remember that? I remember that. And then it was either you or Grandma, and y'all took it outside. To and clean, clean it. Oh, I was like, "Come on, history, Jesus!" I never saw that. Yeah, it was it was a a cast iron. It was it was iron. a cast iron iron. iron. Exactly. What, Where is it? You don't know. I we don't know. know. I, I, but say so, then those are the small things that we lose as as African Americans. Not we knowing lose. That it would be treasure. Exactly. You know, exactly. We had one, and treasure. I feel like it would be. Well, they didn't tell the show the shed down there. Yeah, it's gone. But in, even in it was tearing it down, I never saw it in tearing it down. I missed the whole shed moment. I wasn't there when they took the shed down. No. But I was there when they was taking stuff out, but I never saw that. Where was that? I don't know. You, well, I, don't I was know. working. I was, was working. working. I was working. But, um, but small stuff, small stuff like that, as African Americans, we lose, you know? A and washboard. Uh, you know what a washboard is? I know what a washboard is. Yeah, that's what we had to wash our clothes with. We didn't have a washer and dryer. I we remember the line in the backyard. Yeah. Grandma had a go. Grandma Papa had a garden. My garlic. grandmother would wash her clothes. She didn't have a lot of clothes. But what she what she had was like pearly white. Her whites were like white. She was use, she would use bluing. She would wash her clothes, wash them twice. Then when she would rinse them, hmm. Then she would make some bluing water and rinse them again. She, like I said, she didn't have the best clothes, but her clothes were the cleanest clothes. You kept I what you had. had. You yeah. made sure that what you had was good. She, you know? she had the cleanest clothes that you ever wanted to see. Her clothes was like white. I mean white. But um, yeah, we grew up drawing water. We grew up splitting wood. We ain't want to get it in, but. <laughs> We had to stay warm. Girl, I didn't want to get it in. I did not want to get my. I'm hurting, y'all, from lifting all this wood. We got wood, a little bit of wood in the back, the, the big discs of wood, and we had wood on the side. Y'all, this one week without heat, we have gone through all of that wood. So I just. And we have a ram in the bush because my brother just asked me, did we want some wood that he cut down? So we and gotta it's, go it's get a, it. And I. Again, with the little, with the young cousins and us talking about it, we, I mean, a constant family circle, a constant family thing. When you don't have, and and how many of it is of y'all? Like ten. With my mother is seven children. Seven children. And then I have like probably four or five other siblings. Yeah. So. So it's a, it was a lot of them, but you know. And we all did our share. Even though we didn't want to, we all did it. You had to do, you it. Had to do it. Go get that wood in, boys. <laughs> you know. I remember my oldest brother. When he left home, he would come back up the house. And my brother then would be getting in wood. They you talking about Stanley? I'm talking about Stanley. <laughs> Stanley, would, he would come and play all the time. They would, he would mess with him because they still had to get in wood. And he didn't do it. <laughs> one, night, one night, my um, brother then was get, bringing wood in. Every time they would come to the door, he would close the door in their face. <laughs> he would close the door in their face. And this one particular time, somebody came to the door with an arm of wood. And he closed the door in their face and broke the window pane. Oh, Isha. <laughs> and he and did would he do leave? stuff. Did he leave? <laughs> he would he do just stuff stop and, and leave. He just looked silly. And then he would go, go on back to Richard. When I was young, uh, Stan, Stanley, uh, I called him dad. 
Stanley would come over and he would do something and he kn- he know he ain't, he wasn't supposed to do it. He would leave. <laughs> but y'all would comment every time. But I mean, I just I love my family. I don't know if you have I don't know if you can trace the the small things like that in your family history. And we're just really we're just really starting to to talk about it as the younger cousins. We would talk, we would hear the stories, you know, um, and just general, um, and just general uh, conversation with, you know, at dinner with, or if we were at a funeral. That's when a lot of the conversation would come out. You know, I remember when, um, but now it's a lot. It's, we're having a conversation more. And I know that we be upstairs and y'all be downstairs. And that's why I wanted to have a conversation with all of them. Because I want, I would like for Cam and, and, and Brian and them to understand that that wasn't that far ago. It, that y'all, it, that wasn't, my mom is I'm here now. She's only 58. Ago. That was not that long ago. They had an outhouse. They had all that kind of stuff. bathroom in the house. We were finally getting a bathroom, and we were, we had to move. That was just before Michael turned a year old. We it was living in Ashland. Oh, I was living in Ashland for a second. Ashland for See? a second. I didn't know that. And just before he turned a year old, we had to move because the man that we were renting oh, the I house heard that from, sold it up. He um sold the property. He was an older man. And he always told us we had a home for life, but he was old, so you know. We had to move. Like I said, just before Michael turned a year old, we moved to Hamrico. So, that just, my dad was in the process. Yeah, Michael's man. only 30. How old am I? Tell, you tell me. <laughs> you tell me how old. 30 something years old. <laughs> and um, we were just getting a bathroom in that house. So, yeah. It's not that, we, it's not that long ago. And, I just, I'm so amazed. I'm so amazed at like, not only our family, just just black people in general, you know, where we come from and all of that stuff. And you, and, and people ask why you, how, how, can I, how can I put this politely? But I mean, do I need to be polite? You know, why are we so, why are we the way we are? It's because we, we come from so much it's so much struggle. Okay, so my family comes from Ashland. Okay, center of the universe. Our they used to live their first the first house and our church was on on Wickham Print the Wickham, Wickham Plantation. Plantation. Okay, so if when you go to my to my home church, Providence in Ashland, Providence Baptist Church, you it's a dirt road it was a dirt road for a long time now they're starting to build up sub, a subdivision around it but for the longest time it was a dirt road and it's and once you get to the church it can it's it's still a dirt road i can't mm-hmm. I'm, it's still a dirt road mm-hmm. you know and i haven't i think i only went back there one time and i was really young I, was it church we, anniversary we visit, yes we visited the wickham plant we went back in and visited one the time. plantation and it was the eeriest it was it was the eeriest feeling that i have ever felt it's almost like we were going we went down and it was almost like you would look over in the field and see people out in the field <laughs> working it was like i remember that's scary. when i remember it was in the what we rode the church bus we back rode, down mm-hmm. in there. I, who did, I can't remember who I still sat by, but they were telling me about, like, on Sis. There um, was a lady named Virginia Shelton. Virginia lived Virginia to be 108 Lee, years old. 108. I visited her before she, she lived passed. on the plantation. She, mm-hmm. And when we went back down in there, she pointed out her house. Mm-hmm. She said, that's the house I used to live in. So we had her to tell the story of the plantation, you know. She was our our guide, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. You know, we we saw the main house, we saw the library, which I believe is still standing today. Um, we saw the kitchen that the slaves cooked in. What the ancestors? What the ancestors used to do? Because I I just I remember sure. somebody said something about ancestors. But um, yeah. We, no. We, Does that? I don't, I don't remember. I don't know. I but just we, that's strong we, in I my was, head. I was little. We grew up. We grew up on the Wickham plantation, not knowing that that's what we were. Right. 
you know. But yeah, because it was so far. It was far back in there, but it wasn't that far in there, you know, from the church. Okay, so there was the church, and then there was a split, and we had our family mm-hmm, area, yeah, mm-hmm. and then you would drive back, and you would have, you know, the the Wickham family and all that kind of stuff down down in the mm-hmm. back. So just the small the small stuff. I was um, we at Connie came upstairs. I heard Connie was telling you a lot of stuff, and she she would make you know people that you don't know. <laughs> you and, and you remember? The more I you know, know I who know. I'm talking about, Mm-mm, girl. And yeah. she'll keep on going, she'll but keep going, but that's crazy. Mm-hmm. I just that that took us down memory lane, but just just having no heat for this week, y'all. And it's supposed to be snowing next week, okay? Um, it's been cold. We we have we have high ceilings, so it gets really cold really fast in here, okay? But just this week, and and it only worked out. See how God works. Um, me, me editing the videos, I've been up, you know, well past three, four. I know these past two days leading up to the show on Friday, I was up to like three, four, five, six, you know. I know Thursday I was up to like six or something, and I just kept chucking the wood. But it's a it's a lot of work. It is a lot of work, and then you got to know how to chop the wood the right way. <laughs> if you get a, a piece of wood with a knot. Oh, girl! I had a piece of it's a piece of wood in the back right now. You a knot is the worst thing. It got two knots on mm-hmm. it. Oh, it's, it's hard. It's hard work. It is hard work, and then if that axe gets stuck up in that wood, we had we had um, along with the axe, we had this like chisel. We'll see. We don't have the hit, but <laughs> when we were coming, we had this piece, of, this this block of metal, and it and it came. It was about this wide, and it came down to a point. Mm-hmm. So you was get, get we it would, down in there. We would get it down in it and it split that wood and if it had a knot in. We, we okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that that kind of stuff is hard. So how far how imagine. far away did y'all have to go to get y'all wood? And how far away did y'all have to go get y'all walk? The water, the well was right at the house. So we just had to walk like a little few few feet from the house. We had a well right there at the house. But see, this is, and this is another thing because my my grandmother had, my grandmother had many siblings. Oh, it was like, I think 13 of them. 13 of them, one passed away when one she was passed young. Away. I think and this she was this, 13. This is, she was, that's snake bit her. A snake bit her. Like okay. the, the small things. In life, like they had an outhouse, you had to go draw your water, you had to go and uh and get your wood. Small things like that. Mm-hmm. We, I lost an aunt, a great aunt. You know, I never met her. Thirteen, you know, you know, that could have happened to my mom. Thank God that it didn't. But the small things that we take for granted as individuals living in 2020 with electric and bathrooms and running water and all that kind of stuff. Not too long ago, you know, we didn't have that. And she, my mom was in Ashland now. It might have been slightly different if you was, like, living in Richmond. Okay? But nonetheless, it, it, it wasn't that far, a far... Ashland not that far from Richmond. 15 minutes? Yeah, <laughs> well, some bad. So... I just thank God for <laughs> give me a hug, Mama, cause I love you. I learned so much just by just watching and living and and, and whatever, you know. Um, but okay. Yeah, if we didn't have this fireplace in his room and this heater in in the dining room, we would have been We'd lost. Been. <laughs> what we gonna do? You yeah. know what we gonna do? But, so. And I've been sitting by it every day. But I, I don't mean I don't I'm not telling y'all this story to complain or telling y'all this story to boast about what we have because we don't have I mean God has been really good to us you know um, and when I was small I used to tell my mom I'm gonna buy a big house and I'm gonna we gonna drink out of wine glasses and we gonna drink root beer every day in the glass bottles I mean if you're looking at Cabernet right, right now we have wine goblets. They only came from Dollar General, the Dollar Tree, a dollar a cup. But nonetheless, I mean, God has brought my 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 prayers and fruitions, uh, brought my prayers to fruition. I can't even speak because I'm so excited. 
just because you know my family has come from so much and my mom has done so much to provide and my grandmother and you know all of them all these people you know even before my aunts and uncles and you know uncle stanley because he was the eldest he was you the know eldest. and in you know country folks and just black individuals and me and my cousins we just have this conversation you know just deeply um but me and Mara, me and Mara, like in it me and Mara in it deep i don't know it just this weekend changes i couldn't stop crying mm, it's just i missed I'm, a lot you missed a lot i just it's it's so it's so it's so refreshing to understand where you come from it was hard because I have a hard time with things now because I didn't have what other kids had, you know. What do you mean with things now? Clothing and shoes, you know. Yeah, and everyone kind of, that kind of rubbed off on me. You know, like, I don't, I'm more of a technology person than more of a clothes person. And, and technology, you got to be up, up to date with technology. But about when I was small... And I still get joked on it because I'm I'm still up in a particular way. When I was small, I used to dress up, you know. But back in the day, you would you you wanted to present yourself well, even though you didn't have much because you didn't want people to look look at you in a different way, you know. So, am I bougie? No, I'm not bougie. But I want to present myself well. So I want to carry myself well, even if I don't have a lot. You know what I'm saying? And, and I thank God for, for where he has brought me as an individual to to be able to 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 buy a home, you know. Take care of his mom. Take That's care of my he mom. Does. He does. He takes care of me. And, you know, I feel bad sometimes because I can't do what I used to do. And, and but God has blessed him to take that, that, that lead. You know, he has taken that lead. And, and the conversation, so the, the conversation that we had over over Thanksgiving weekend, because we had family that stayed the entire Thanksgiving weekend, that just kept us in our bubble, quarantine and being safe. Um, so it was like when Martha passed, Grandma took the mantle. Yes. Right. Yes. Grandma, and then Grandma passed. Oh, Grandma, Grandma. Papa and Stanley, but it was Grandma, and Stan, you know, because Stanley was the eldest, and Stanley helped, and then you know Papa and Grandma, and then Papa and Grandma passed, and Stanley's older now, and they was like, well, who, who is now like the, the family matriarch and, and like the glue, the, yeah, and everybody was like, it's Marsha and Michael. I was like, well, I don't hold on because I'm I'm just how old am I? Thirty-two. I'm thirty-three, y'all. <laughs> if I calculate, I know. Okay. But anyway. Well, she, I mean, we both question how old we are. Okay. I, <laughs> I got to add up every year. <laughs> we got someone like, but they was like, and it's so funny because you would think that the eldest will become. The, the group, next person. Yeah. Like, you would think Connie would be that person. Mm -hmm. And you would think Aunt May would have been that person. Mm -hmm. But Aunt, Grandma was the youngest girl. She was the youngest girl. You know? And, and she you, kept the family together. Yeah. Every Sunday after church. Every Sunday. Every Sunday. She didn't have a whole lot, but she had a meal. My mother worked at Best Products, and when she started at Best Products... She was making two dollars and fifty cents an hour. That's crazy. Lifting refrigerators, stoves. See, I didn't know that. Furniture. Yes, two dollars and fifty cents an hour. Could you imagine? Living on two dollars and fifty cents. Seven children, but she provided for us every. Provided day. for us and then family. Then yes. those that came along. She sure did. And she did not deny not anybody. She didn't all. complain. She didn't deny any. You come on. And we gonna make it happen. Yeah. And that's just what I love. I love that about my family. But I love that so much about grandma. That's why I miss her so much. I just miss my grandma so much. You know. Yep. I'm gonna go. Let me go get a picture real quick of my grandma. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This lady, y'all, this lady just, 
this lady means so much to me. I mean, I love my, I love this lady right here. Mm-hmm. You know, and, but they neck and neck. Okay, they neck and neck. It's no, I mean, everybody that encountered my grandmother, you know, I mean, it, we couldn't help but to love her. She had the, she had the sweetest spirit about her, and you never really saw her get angry. You can tell us. I'm gonna tell that story. <laughs> tell a story, please. She was. It was this lady that lived in Ashland. <laughs> she was pretty mean. And one night she was going to rehearsal. And I don't know what this lady had did or said. She was always doing something. Going to Ashland. She on her way to choir rehearsal. Got to Ashland. I'm gonna go to church and I'm gonna whip this lady's. I ain't gonna say her name. I'm gonna whip this lady's ass. <laughs> That's and that just that, it doesn't sound like my grandma yeah. at all. But if this you lady take it, made her that mad. This is my grandmother. Went to Ashland, Charlotte. Got to Ashland and st- was stopped by the police. She said, "You know what? You can't even go to church in peace." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Mom, I said you knew when you left here. You said you were gonna go to church and whip that lady's ass. So that's why that police stopped you. God stopped you before you got to church. God knew it. And then." The same night, the lady was on her way to church, got down at the bottom to go up the hill, and had an accident in the curb. See? God God, God just stopped it. Stopped God it. knew. He God knew, knew that, that that was taking her out of her character. Out of her character. But she was going to go to church. This is the church. best lady she ever, is y'all. the best lady that you ever want to meet. I don't see how she put up with stuff that she put up with. But God made her to be the person that she God is. made her to be the person that she is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do we all do we look alike? All three of us. Jeez. People told me they in church, they said, if your mother passed away, as long as she they said as long as you live, your mother will always live. We got the same nose. I see. Everybody say that me and my mama look alike. Step forward. So I can't I don't know. Mm. I don't know, girl. I don't know. You know, you know. But this, I, I we don't look like we dog on show got the same thoughts. It's so spooky. Sometimes. We'll go to the. We won't even communicate and come back from the grocery store with the same thing. Exact girl. same thing. Get out of here, the y'all. Charlotte, thing. Charlotte. We call her sin. Hallelujah. I love this lady right here. I love this lady. I just, I don't know what I would, I don't know who I would be without Marsha and Charlotte. And she died early. She died at an early age. She was only 61 when she passed away. So that's young. That's really young. That's young. You know. But she had, she, I mean, she carried so much. You know, she carried so much. And when you carry, and this is why, uh, uh, this is why African Americans have so much more health problems than other individuals. Because we uh, we carry so much from our history, you know, we carry so much from our history. So I just I thank God for the black race, African Americans, for our history from slaves up until this present moment. Because we've had to endure so the food much. that we ate, the food that they ate, it was it was. I don't know the word to use. It was food that probably wasn't supposed to be eaten. Mm-hmm. But they had to eat. They had to live. So that that food that they ate probably made their health bad. But it kept them it kept them alive. It kept them alive, Jesus. It kept them alive. So like chitlins and Love Stuff me some like chitlins. That. I love me some chitlins. But that's all you had. That's what they had. That's what they had. And now that stuff is going. They made gourmet meals out of that stuff. Some of the things that the scraps that was given to us is now popular. Mm-hmm. You know. But um, yeah. We better talk this chicken done, girl. We, we didn't, talk we didn't done. come up on the best, but we were. We, but we're we thankful had, for we were what thankful. we had. Exactly. We were thankful. Okay, for this history moment. Come on, Glory. Did y'all hold on? Okay, because we just having a whole a whole moment. Jesus, did you like and share? Okay, because y'all y'all learning my whole family, Jesus. Go ahead and like and share. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's but not it's, just our family. Many it's more not families. exactly. Many it's many not family. just our family. It's and I, I kept telling Myra and and 
I you know I keep saying Mara because me and just me and Mara are so deep in it right now. We just so deep in it. But um, it's just oh oh oh. oh. <laughs> See, I knew she wanted stuff. That's enough. That's enough. Um. Oh, you made me lose my train of thought. Um. I know. What did you say before me? Because it made me go to that. <laughs> step. You gotta step forward. Okay. Um. But yeah, it's just, and it's. I feel like it's so. Imp, it's so important to have the moments, because we haven't. COVID. COVID did this for us because we were we were distant. You know, when my grandmother passed, because she was the matriarch. I'm going to take that down and let me move this out of the way. Oh, yeah. Because she was the matriarch of our family after her mother passed. After she passed, we were we were in, like, limbo for a minute, you know? And I think what made me become the the uh, the father moment, what is it? What did, not, not patriarch, the patriarch <laughs> after Stanley, because, you know, Stanley's now, you know, um, was after... Grandma passed. We had that moment, but then I started to plan the family reunion. I think after I planned the family reunion, from then on I became. Because people look for you. Too. And they, every and it's not only in family. And I guess that just comes from from um, me and from my mom and from my grandmother. You know, just the whole when we want something done, we gonna get it done. You know, and that's how my grandmother was. You know, and she always did it right. If it and you ain't did right, it, hello somebody. Right, you ain't gonna, she yeah. ain't gonna do it. Hello somebody. So when people call me extra, you're doing too much. You being extra. It's not. It's not being extra. It's having a a level of 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 um, what do I want to say? I don't know if a level of excellence about yourself. Mm -hmm. You know. A level of, of presentation. Why? That's why I say presentation is everything. You know, not only in your food, but in your in in the way your you carry us in your daily life. Exactly. And you're not trying to. You, people look at you all the time. Yeah. And that for I what for you the do and what you don't do. For the longest time, y'all, I stress, and I still do as an adult. You know, I stress about what people, and you know, it's supposed to, but it's so hard, and it's even harder for me. That's the that's the thing that I struggle with. Stress about what people think of you, how people view you, how people perceive you, how people think, you know, what are they thinking about me when I do this? And I still do it, you know, in, in this present moment, what I look like. And sometimes, you know, I can care less. You know, like the kids be like, what? your shoes, you know, because I have two pair of Jordans, two pair of Jordans, and I'll crush them. And y'all would be like, <gasps> but for me, Jordans are just a pair of shoes to keep my feet off the ground. You know, and small things like that, I think we as African Americans lose because we're more about the name. The thing I like, my niece, there are a pair of shoes upstairs right now, some flaves. If you get it, and I, I know this is not just her, this is just the, the, the mindset of, you know, individuals. If you put a crease in those shoes, I can't wear them no more. I can't wear them no more. Okay. Those shoes look brand new, girl. I will wear a shoe till it got a hole in it. Hmm. And and that was just that was just my mindset, Be and we didn't we didn't have a lot when we were uh, growing up, but no. we had enough. We had enough where you know it was more than what my mom had, you know, when she was small. We and I was I was very pleased with that. You know, we used to get shoes from Kmart. You know, when we were small, Kmart. We but, we grew up wearing each other's clothes. You know? So... And when I would get clothes from other people, I would be like, you know? But it was nothing wrong with that. Yeah, we... That, that's how we grew up. But it's so sad. Clothes. It's so sad that now our, our mindset is we can't even put a crease in our shoes. We're that good. You know, we're that good that we can't even put a crease in our shoes. We got to throw them away. No, that's not me. So, you know, when um, when I, like, mess up something, like, I, I drip something on LaShawn's, and it wasn't boots. on her boots, on uh, her Uggs. I was so apologetic because you don't know how people receive that and how people 
um, magnify their, their, yeah, their material things. You know, I, I'm not a very materialistic person. I do have a lot of things. Yes, I do. But I work very, very hard for the things that I that I, I get, and I thank God for you know. And I'm still struggling, you know. I'm I'm not where I would like to be, in the, you know. And I feel like everyone's not in a place where they would like to be. But I thank God for the mindset of you know, I'm not gonna throw these away because they you know they just got a crease on it. No, no. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep it moving, you know. I struggle with him. He has so many clothes. <laughs> I have so many clothes, but y'all. I used to be a little bigger. Yeah. And I lost a little weight in quarantine. Thank you, Lord. You know. He used, put it this way. He used to be smaller. I used to be and smaller. And he still had the clothes that he had when he was smaller. Because I want to get back. I might get back. I might get hit. And then I got larger. And then I started to lose weight. What did I have? Those clothes. Thank you for the transitional moment, <laughs> Jesus. But, <laughs> but... I guess that was the mindset of you don't have a lot. Hold on to what you got, Jesus, until something better comes along. Something did better come. Something better came along. But then I was like, "Ooh, something better gonna come along because I'm gonna lose this weight and I'm gonna get back in these cute clothes." Okay. <laughs> but that's the, that's something I struggle with too because my mind is like, "You didn't have a lot. You need to hold on to this." And that's how some individuals become hoarders. I'm not gonna become a hoarder. No, we're not gonna do that. But uh, but I I have I don't have a lot of clothing. People say that I changed out my wardrobe, my summer wardrobe, to my winter wardrobe. Mm-mm, I don't do that because I wear what I have all year round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, I don't need to do that because I don't need all of that. I can't wear all this stuff at one time. I can't wear but one pair of shoes. I love shoes. I have two bags of shoes upstairs now that I got to give away because I can't wear heels anymore. So, that's just materialistic things. So, all my shoes now are flat shoes because I I fell and hurt my back. So, I can no longer wear heels. So, all the heels that I like, okay, now they're they're gone. I can't buy heels anymore. But I still love shoes, but I can't wear but one pair of shoes at a time. So, you're right, and you can't take it with you when you go away. Some people put it in the grave with them, but <laughs> what you gonna do with it? Every day, since this COVID, every day I, I thank the Lord for what I have. I thank the oh, yeah. Lord for the things that I thank he's the Lord for what we have me. and with the people that He's placed in our lives that has helped us because we've had even people outside of our family has you know helped mm-hmm. us in times of trouble. Yeah. You know, it, again, hasn't been, it hasn't been easy, you know, but, but we doing this COVID situation, I realized, really realized how blessed ooh, the two of us hello are. Hello, somebody. That, I know, agree with we, that. I, I wasn't tidying, my, tidying like I should, and I, I still don't tide enough, but since COVID, I have tied every Sunday. I didn't work from March to May, and I tied. You know, and I'm so thankful that the Lord has blessed me to give him his portion back. Mm-hmm. So we, we, we've been without, not without food. Mm-hmm. We've been not without electricity. We've been not without water. I ain't going to say a few times, yeah, it got cut off, mm-hmm. but it got cut back on. But and that's the that's the COVID. that's the daily struggle, and that I mean I know that people have worse situations than we do, and we are truly and tremendously blessed. And I just I thank, thank God. God every day. I mean, blessed day. enough to even just like have a laugh right now, mm-hmm. you know, to have this little setup because people can't even do this. Mm-hmm. Hello, somebody, you know, and I don't, and 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 that's where I struggle with as well because you know people will 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 perceive the things that you have and where you come from and what you got right now with like, oh, you cut you, oh, you doing it. No. It took us, it, it took, took a, a minute to get we, right here. Hello, we've been in this we house been, in yeah, yeah, we ain't been, been right here the whole time. Yeah. We've been in this house, but we ain't been right here. We ain't been right here. And, and we, and this right here, here <laughs> this right here, right moment is not where we need to be either. No, Cause we, we still got a lot to do. And this is for everybody, you know? 
So I don't want you to look at like, oh, the grass is greener all the day out. Yeah, <laughs> Keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah, my grass. last name, my last name is Jones, but girl, I cut that grass and I make it look good. Okay, but one. Hello, somebody. Oh no, I had to stop myself. <laughs> oh goodness, but yeah, Michael Jones, Marsha Johnson. A blast. Yeah. I thank God for what I have, what I'm gonna have, and what I thank Him for the things that He's gonna give me. Yeah. I don't know what it is, uh, but I thank Him in advance for the things that He's gonna put in my life. Yeah. You know, I have to. I have to. I have to, because God has been so good. I go to work every day and I listen to my gospel music. Every day. What kept the black folks around and moving? I think I listened. I was listening to the Tina Turner um, Pandora station when oh, I first got in my, <laughs> in, my, in my In the in shop, because that's what I turned on. But after the pandemic, it's like I didn't know which way to go. I was just distraught. I told Michael I was scared. He fussed at me. Why are you scared? Because it's life. Mm -hmm. Because it's life. Yeah, I was scared. I'm not as scared now as I was in the beginning, but after the pandemic came about and when I did and went back in the shop, I turned my gospel music on. And that what keeps me grounded every day. Every day that I go in the shop, my gospel music keeps me grounded. A little boy came in, he was getting his hair done, and my music was on. He said, turn away from this mess. <laughs> oh, did he? Yeah. <laughs> I said, no, I'm not. He said, why are you listening to this? I said, because this is what I want to listen to. He, and he didn't like it, but it's because he didn't know any better, you know? And I just asked the Lord to, you know, bless it's him. So, it's so cute because, again, Myra, Myra was like, we were talking about grandma and, you know, all of that stuff. And she was just like, grandma, Charlotte, uh, showed us truly without and, and, and she said it you know but just in living she showed us that God was so important you know because of the things that she went through as an individual but she she kept God so close that it didn't allow her to be salty or negative or mad or you know hurt so hurt that it, it it took it out on on the people around her. She she still continued to be. She did, and and if I could have learned from that early in my life, because things happened to me that I didn't understand why, and like I said, it haunts me today. It, it my past haunts me. You don't you're supposed to let go of your past, but it's hard to let go when you feel like some of the same stuff that was in your past is. Still in your present. And that's why we're but having I was mad. I was mad at the world. Mm -hmm. I was mad at the world for what happened to me, for who did it. And, you know, I was mad. I went to church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Didn't stop going to church, but I went to church mad. Just mad. People, how you doing today? Have a good day. What's so good about it? You know, I was mad every day. I took out all of that on other people. They had nothing to do with right. it. You know, but I'm I'm thankful now that I haven't let go of all of it, but I'm better. You know, I'm better. But yeah, being being mad, it don't it don't it don't fix the situation. Don't fix the situation. You got to keep living. Yeah, and if you sit in that space, you just make yourself miserable. You know. And I can tell people now that going through the same thing, you know, I was there. Mm -hmm. I was mad like you are. But you, you you make mistakes in your life. But you gotta you gotta remember some of the mistakes that you made, you brought them on yourself. And I still have mistakes that I made that I have a hard time correcting or don't and don't know how to get it corrected. You know, financially, I don't know how to correct that stuff. But, um, I mean, I know how, but getting there. Mm -hmm. So, don't be mad at everybody else because of the errors that you made. You know, I stayed mad for a long time. Yeah, and I'm just, I'm, I'm 33, and I'm just finding, 
and this again this weekend y'all this the the thanksgiving weekend has really it, it changed my it changed my whole you know i don't know it just changed my whole thought process you know just because we were talking about family and just listening to it and you know i just i couldn't stop crying i went i went and talked to denise you know just to you know i i talked to her i said thank you because you had a husband who was the eldest and you know he had to step in you know and that was that had to be a lot because then you were taking care of your family and so you know it was just a it's a lot as 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 uh, African Americans and it, and again this is this bubble is not just for my family because this it, it has happened to so many individuals to so many you know families like us you know so I'm just I'm just thankful but it has trans it has transferred trans ooh, get your lips together it has changed my mindset and has made me you know think a little bit further you know and I haven't always been in this place and I've you know we've been in this house for 10 years I purchased my home when I was 25 20 20 how old am I 23 23 I I purchased when I was 23 okay so that's a blessing to buy a home at 23 you know Um, and I couldn't have done that without the help of my mother but in the same token they was looking at my credit, not my mama's credit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm thankful for my mom, but I'm also thankful for where God has has where God where God supplied. You know what I'm saying? And I, I couldn't have done it without my mom because I you know I have never lived alone. And that's crazy for me to say. I've never lived alone. I live with my sister and I help take care of my niece. I live with you, you know, and then we live with grandma and grandpa and then you had a house. I mean, I've never lived alone, alone. And I don't have any problems with that because I'm comfortable and I know who I am and I and I love my family so much that I would I I would not live alone just to, for my family to be happy. You know, and I brought this house and we brought this house thinking of our family. Our family. You know, when we were searching for homes, it was like that we need a big home because we have family. And this is what we do, you know, you know, and this is what we used to do. And we had got away from it. And that's, you know, we wanted to, we wanted to bring that back. So I just, I just thank God. You know, how you feel, girl? Same. Mm. I'm, I'm just, I can't thank him enough. It's, it's, I you go know, to bed and thank him. They I say a thousand, a thousand, a thousand tongues. Ten thousand tongues ain't couldn't enough. Think it's not enough. It ain't enough. It's not enough. You're right. We ain't preaching. We ain't preaching tonight. Okay. We talk about history. I brought her in here to talk about chopping wood and where we going. We where we went to the whole family history. But well, that's that how chopping it, wood. It's 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 family. It is that's family. how it has to go. Yeah. That is history. Yeah. And I just I got a little teeny blister. Okay. I had two. I had to take this ring off. I had to, I had to pop a blister to get this ring off, cause I was like, oh my god, this, <laughs> what have I done to these piano hands? <laughs> but I was just like, well, thank you God for the pot belly stove that was in my grandparents' house, my great grandparents' house. You know, thank God for my aunts and uncles. Thank God for my grandma and grandfather. Yeah, my grandma, my dad's mom. In her house, she cooked on the wood stove. Hmm. She baked the cake in the wood stove. Yeah, she had. She didn't have no gas stove. She didn't have no electric stove. She had a wood stove. And went to her house, and that house was warm. You hear me? Hmm. Grandpa kept that house warm. We had a little bench sitting uh, by that stove. Who put the who put the who put the fire or who put the wood in the fire and, and made the stove turn red? Wilbur. <laughs> <laughs> Lord. No, it was an oil stove. An oil stove. He let the, too much oil run in it. I thought it was a wood stove. Cause it was look, oil I at that time. That's that's when Daddy changed 
into a wood stove. Oh. He, he changed it from an oil stove to a wood stove. After Wilbur. After Wilbur. It's that thing. thing was so red. It was like we was running out and we had sand in our yard. We I know ran out in that yard a dozen times to get that fire out in that heater. Really? We had to go and get sand and put in that fire to get that fire out. Oh, wow. I mean, it was... I can't describe the red. The stove, the whole stove. The whole stove. stove. <laughs> Cause he had that too well, much uh, water running well, there. Well, uh, he lit it. It was like my dad was so mad with him. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, no he more turned, oil. He, he turned, turned that oil stove into a wood stove. And see, that was just the, even the small things. Like Papa didn't have a. He didn't have an education. education. My dad had to stop school. I want to say the eighth grade. He stopped going to school to help his brothers get go to school. And that's just so crazy because pa- back then you you had to use your hands, you know. And Papa was so good. He Papa was, was good. He was, he was and it was it was stuff. just it just carried through our family because I, I can do a lot of things, but I'm mean like Jesus, don't give me all the talents because you know somebody gonna be like. And people are like that. They are like that. They're jealous of they, And I feel like, and this is my honest truth. This is my honest truth. Okay? I feel like a lot of people do not converse with me. A lot of people do not talk to me. A lot of people are intimidated by me. Even schoolmates. I told you that. It's just because you do so much. It's not my fault that Jesus did it. Okay, but you can't be mad at me. He gave each of us. He gave each of us so many talents. Mm-hmm. And you, it was it, up to you. It's to up to you. Whether you want to use them all or find the one that you like the best. Shoot. I was the same way. I had so many things that I could do. I made cakes. Mm-hmm. I made cakes. I decorated cakes. I made wedding cakes. My mom said you should get a bakery. And I don't want a bakery. Not knowing that I was going to be doing hair. That's a long way from... From bakery. Making. But for the longest time, my mama made cakes. So she could have had a bakery. You ha- you did bake you did cakes for a long time before I did. Sh- before you switched over to hair. Mm-hmm. And then she had like this mo- middle moment where he was a secretary. So you I went- didn't like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> so she baked cakes and then she had the moment where she was a secretary and she was, he was going to work. He was going to school for hair at the same I, time. I, you did secretary I and then you hated, stopped. I hated then- the secretarial work. And I went into retail and hated that. And I was doing so much. What made me really go into doing hair, my mother was ill. Mm-hmm. And her hair started to come out. So I went, started going to school. It only took, was supposed to take me nine months to go to school. Started going to school. I got down to my last. And I said, Mom, I'm just going to cut your hair off. I said, I'm going to go and learn how to take care of hair because I want to take care of your hair. And that's why she went, she went to this look? Yeah. That's when you cut her hair off. It was before then. And it grew back because she and went to the hospital. Back. Yeah, because mm-hmm. she had to have brain surgery. Mm-hmm. So her hair just started coming out and I started doing sew-ins. And it just wasn't healthy for her hair because her hair was so fragile. So I said, Mom, I'm going to cut your hair down, and I'm just going to work with it and try to get it to come back to life. I forgot Grandma had brain surgery. I just, you just mm-hmm. brought that back And to before I finished school in 2004, I was just about, I was ready to finish. And I had to stop because she passed mm-hmm. away. So that's how I really got into hair. Because I used to do her hair all the time, and then my nieces would have some of their friends to come. I said, y'all. If anything happened to y'all hair, I don't blame me. I said I'm not a licensed beautician, so that what made me. She made me. My mother made me decide I wanted you to do that. hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she wanted me to have a bakery, and I have people today ask me, "Are you still Are baking cakes?" Are you still cake? baking cakes, girl? Oh, I don't have time to do that. I said, but by the time I get off from work and come home. And put a cake in the oven and make the icing because I made my own icing. And what you made? What is it? My cake icing. <laughs> icing. Icing. Okay. You're icing. Icing. <laughs> but anyway, oh, I made my own icing, baked those cakes, and those cakes had to cool. Mm. Then I had to decorate it. 
It won't just like spreading the icing on the cake. No. Yeah, when we when you start, started, when you got into the hair and you you would make cakes, but you wouldn't make them that often. You'd be like, okay, I'll make you a cake. It would be late sometimes. It would. I'd be like, I said, no, I can't <laughs> do this and get up early in the morning and go do somebody's hair. I'd rather do the hair than to bake a cake. So, so I, that's why I don't bake cakes anymore. Because by the time I get home, standing on my feet all day, I don't want to come home and stand up and bake a cake. Look at you laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to bake a cake. This so. is. I just love. I just love my family. I love my family in the good and the bad because we all got good and bad. Okay, because if we if you didn't, you wouldn't have a family. You know what I'm saying? So I just love. I just love all of it. I love every aspect of. And, and and like I said, during this time, I just wanted my family to stay together, and it has kept me has, grounded mm. in the midst of this situation that we are in. And I thank God. I plead the blood of my family every day. Nobody hear me, but I do. I plead the blood of my family because I want my family to stay together because they keep me grounded. But by the grace of God, I'm, I'm mentally sane. I pray for my mentality every day. I pray for peace of mind every day because your mind can slip away from you so quick. I was talking to a client the other day. And she was telling me how they had to put her aunt in the mental institution in the beginning of COVID. Be oh, wow. In the beginning of this virus, her aunt, she just, she lost her mind. They had to put her away. You know, it, and it can, it can happen. I was listening to the news one fair. day. Yeah. I was listening to the news one day and this man lost his 10 year old son. Because of COVID, his, he couldn't handle it. Ten years old, mm -hmm. his son committed suicide. That's so sad. That's that's sad. There's many more out here that, you know. I thank God for my family, even though some, to the even though some things we're not supposed to be doing, we 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 stay prayed up. Yeah. We stay. I, I plead the blood over my family every day, just so we can stay together. Just so we can stay in our right mind. Especially for me. <laughs> I pray for my mind every day because it's it's so easy. That's to why, that's how I've gotten into the Zen music and the garden. That music the, is so relaxing. It's I I, I ride in the it. car and I I shared this even before COVID. I used to to tell and I still still tell my choir members this. I mean, you have to have a moment just to yourself. Because if not, you're going to have a whole crash and implode moment. So when I would drive, I, I work like 45 minutes away from here. My church is 45 minutes away from here. And I'm the head of the music department there. The drive to, unless I'm doing, unless I'm prepping music, and the drive from church, I would ride in silence. And when COVID wasn't around, I would leave, I would be at school working with, you know, hundreds of kids, you know, in an auditorium, on the stage, uh, changing batteries, micro, micro, micing my, um, students up, you know, running shows, set design, da da da, uh, graphics, all of this kind of stuff. But on top of that, I had the household, you know, concerns. I had uh, my personal concerns. I had the church concerns. I had my mother concerns. I had brother and sister concerns. All of this weighing on top of you, and you still got to live. You still got to. You still got to do your job. You know, and people are expecting you to do your job. And so it transitioned into me drive. It transitioned into me driving with no music because I just needed that moment to be quiet. I needed to find my sanity. And so I started driving to church, a 45-minute drive with no music, you know, nothing. I would just sit inside. I would drive in silence. And then I would go to rehearsal. I would do my job. You know, I would teach. I would do all of that stuff. And then I would drive home in silence. And then I would sit in the car. You know, once I got home, I would sit in the car. And then I would listen to my music. And then I would have my moment of, you know, get yourself together. I would listen to, like, my Tina Turner 
and you know all the old stuff that you know kind of made you feel good and I would scroll through Facebook and you know see, you know catch up and then I would go in the house I would sit in my car after I after the 45 minute drive from church home I would sit in my car for another hour hour and 30 minutes I would do that you know because that was my that was where I needed to find myself and then after that I I changed because I used to sit on my balcony, but I didn't have the forest. We call it the forest. Um, but then COVID hit, and I was like, I need because we were in home. We were in the house. When I know when we first we first did COVID, we we did things so differently because we were always home, and and that was everybody because everyone didn't know what was going on, you know. So I was at home, and I would do the whole. Uh, pictures of my food you know and then it transitioned to me okay I'm gonna do this about because I needed something else I wasn't driving to I wasn't going to school you know and then I wasn't when COVID hit we had we had this we had to close school that's how far <laughs> that's how far COVID was but we had to close school and then we stopped we closed church they, they closed that down so I was like just sitting here like I lost my pattern, you know. What what am I gonna do? So then I put the plant. That's how the plants came upstairs. I was like, I need to do something to focus my brain. Plants came, then the Zen music came. I just I, I started to find myself a, a different a different me, but the same me. Cause the same me was driving with without any music. Mm-hmm. Now the the difference the different me was listening to the music all the time. Now I can't turn this music off. I gotta ha- the all house night. the house does that all bother night. you? It doesn't bother me. <laughs> it doesn't bother. At first it did. The thing is, is she say all night because I have a big speaker. <laughs> I used to have surround sound and then the surround sound just gave out. It was old. Um, and then I have I have a I have my audio speaker because I do music so I had that plugged in so I know she hears the bass you hear the bass <laughs> I know she hears the bass but the va- the bass is just like this 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 oh I don't know I can't explain it it's just it's so soothing and so and so if you turn this music off in this house the house to me <laughs> to me the, the house is so dead it's <laughs> like I can what's going on so when the music not on, like when we have when we have the sleepovers and stuff, I feel so empty. <laughs> Cause I, even though there's noise in the house, cause the kids are running around, we playing or whatever. It's just like there's something missing. The house is too quiet, and it's because of the music now. It's just the small things. The small things carry us, <laughs> y'all. Okay, Marsha, I done talked your head off. You done talk my head off too. I think you you done. <laughs> you done with your mug, girl. Yeah. All right, y'all. We're gonna check this chicken. We're gonna pull it out. We're gonna make this chicken salad. We're gonna shred this chicken up for uh, potatoes tomorrow for family dinner, and we're gonna keep it moving. I know y'all be like, this man videos is always super long, but hopefully y'all done heard something. Y'all was inspired to love on your family and all that stuff. Okay, because this chicken. Make sure because I don't want it dry. Okay. Normally don't cut through. We're gonna pull this right on out. If you cut it while it's hot, then you lose all the pieces. Okay. So we took that out, Marsha. Mm-hmm. Give me a hug, girl. Thank you for the family history. And the- I love you, girl. I love you. I guess I love you. <laughs> this is my mama, y'all. All right, you can go on about your business Bye. now. <laughs> I love your head. I'm trying to walk. Oh, Asha. Excuse me. And I miss Frankenstein. Oh, there was Frankenstein was on. Yeah. It's still on? No, it's going on. Oh, Star Asha. Star Trek, Star Trek on. You better go yeah, check that vibe, girl. You know, baby. back y'all we done had a whole history moment okay is it out all right all you got to do is open the bottom 
let it let the air go in. No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Put your wood in. Spread your coals out. Spread. Oh, oh, you're right. You just told me, but but you you be like Michael know how to get the fire going. Oh, okay. Oh, your childhood then came back to your brain. <laughs> okay. All right. So, y'all, we just had we just had a whole history moment. Thank you, mom. I love you, girl. All right. So I'm gonna take two of these chicken breasts that we just we just took out of the oven. Look at that. Okay. Two chicken breasts. We're gonna cube them out. I'm gonna get my big knife. Cause I like this big knife better. We're gonna cube them out. This is super hot because it just came out of the oven. But I can't wait anymore. I'm gonna taste this little corner. Mmm. 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 Please hold. Please hold. I feel like I need to fix that color. All right, let's transition this over to you guys. Transition. Okay, so we're cubing up these moments of chicken, which is super hot. I'm only using two chicken breasts. I'm not making a lot of chicken salad. Okay. I'm not making a lot. This drink is hot though, honey. Okay. Can anybody else, this has anybody else like had a conversation with their, their parents about their history, where they come from? You know, why we do, why we have the traditions we have, you know? And it's so, it's so important. It's, it's even more important because, um, because of the state in which we are in. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't, I didn't mean for us to be like super deep, but it's good to have those moments. It's good to have those moments. It keeps you grounded as an individual. I'm just saying, don't judge my life. Just do better. Okay, I say so. Mm. If I eat all the chicken, we're gonna have it just a chicken salad. Steams and cools.
pieces of chicken. And we're just gonna fork it. Just gotta find. We're just gonna shred that chicken. Just with a fork. Try not to make as so much noise as me. Okay, all you're doing is forking it. Once you find the pattern of the chicken itself, where it peels, where it Muscle gives away. So this chicken we're going to use tomorrow for um, our potato bar. And you're just going to have a few pieces of shredded chicken on there. We have a few um, pieces of pork chop in there that needs to be cooked up. So we're going to I'm going to cube those up and cook those, and then you can have a few pieces of pork chop on top of your potato. Um, a cousin said she's going to bring some shrimp to go on top of the potatoes as well. And then you have your other sides like sour cream and broccoli and cheese. I get to top the salad toppers. Um, let me show you. Because I think I have it over here. Um, I like salad topper on top of my, um, my uh, potato. So... Tomorrow, for Sunday dinner, we're having a, a potato bar. Um, I might go on live. But we're shredding. We uh, put the chicken in the oven. We seasoned it. We did the olive oil. We let that cook through. Now, while it's hot, while it's hot, using two forks, we're just shredding the chicken. You can also do this for your chicken salad. If you like shredded chicken salad, I'm going to do cubes. Okay, my aunt normally, and I like her chicken salad. She normally does the chicken and then shreds it, okay? But for me, I just want... So I like my aunt's chicken salad, but then I also like... Um, I like uh, Sam's Club chicken salad. I just... When you get when I get Sam's Club chicken salad, then I, I you know, <laughs> I make it the black version. Okay, so I put a little relish and mustard and all that kind of stuff in it just to give it a extra flavor that it's missing okay so we season our chicken our chicken should be good and then we're going to we're letting our cubes cool down okay um we're letting our cubes cool down while we shred our chicken and we don't have to really do anything other than shred this for the for the um for the potato bar tomorrow. So we've already seasoned this. We're just shredding it, and then we can put it in the refrigerator to, for tomorrow, okay? And I'm only doing three breasts. I brought five, I'm doing two for my chicken salad, I'm doing three for dinner tomorrow, okay? So you just wanna go in, I'm using two forks, and all you want to do is find the pattern of, the, your, of your meat. And what I mean by pattern, where it, how it shreds, okay? So if I have this one piece of chicken right here, all right? Ooh, Grandma, Grandma's hands, clap in church on Sunday morning. All right, so as you can see, it goes this way. Choo, 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 choo. So I'm going to pull my, pull my fork the way of the chicken, okay? and it starts to give way to that moment, okay? I was gonna do it in the bowl, but I feel like it's a little easier and I wanna stop clinking the bowl, okay? So all we're doing is just shredding the chicken up, okay? And it's easier to do it when it's nice and warm. And all I'm doing not doing much. All I'm doing is holding this down and I'm just pulling for. And if it's cooked well, it should just fall apart. Okay? Fall apart. Da da da. Y'all making it? Can we pause right here? Because, can y'all believe we all went through the, the, the whole jar? I did give her a sip, but I drank most of it. Let's just be honest. Okay? My mama and I just had a whole moment, children of the coin, and y'all witnessed it. Jesus, come on, glory. Yeah, I just like family history. I like history, period, but family history is so much more personal. 
Hello. Because it, it just helps you know who you are. So, thank you for those who watched. You know, and if you missed it, you can go back. Because we talked about a lot of stuff just now. You know? But it's important to have that conversation with your parents. Especially if you have a deep history. You know? We have a deep history. My family grew up on a plantation! Uh, and that's how close it is. That's how, you know, a lot of... When I was growing up... A lot when I was growing up, when I was in elementary school, you know, I didn't know all that. I didn't know all those details, you know, and and I would go to church every Sunday. I'm very involved in church, you know. I was very involved as a little kid. I was the church boy, and I can't help that. That's just who Jesus made me to be, you know. But you know, I didn't know. I knew that we were on a plantation, but I didn't know it was that deep, you know. I didn't know that was it was that deep for my family. So, I thank God. Yes, I do. I thank Him every day. You know? Because it's important. It's so important. It's so important to know where you come from. And so you can be the better you that you that you need to be. You know, we all, we all searching to be a better us. But you got to know where you come from to be a better you. Hello, somebody. So, I thank God for people like Charlotte, <laughs> Sing, as we call her, because, you know, without her, I wouldn't be here, you know, this beautiful, beautiful lady, you know, who loved you until, until love was not, a, you know, beyond love, that's what I want to say, she loved you beyond love. It didn't matter. Didn't it? Didn't matter who you was. She loved you, and that's that's the kind of stuff that makes me like, boo hoo. <laughs> and you like you a punk? No, I'm thankful. I, that's that's what I am. I'm thankful for Charlotte. I'm thankful for Marsha. I'm thankful for all of those janks. You know. <laughs> Who would I be without it? That's what I'm saying. Who would you be without your family history? Just a little turd <laughs> sitting, wondering. Okay, Glory? Okay, we're again shredding this chicken because we're having a potato bar tomorrow for a Sunday dinner. And uh, I always question who would have a potato bar? Because I was like, oh, my family wouldn't have a potato bar. But now, guess what? We're having a potato bar. How can we advance the potato moment? So what are some of the things that we're going to have at our potato bar? One is this shredded chicken. Because, you know, like me, we're going to be like, where is the meat? So here's, here's some meat. Okay, so we're going to have this shredded chicken and you can just sprinkle it on top. Um, if you wanted to and if you were very fancy, you could have some um, some steak if you wanted to. And you can cook that up. We don't have steak. You can get the little, you, you don't even have to get a whole steak. I like to get a whole steak. I, like, I normally get a New York strip and then cut it very thinly. But if you don't want to do that and you want to go even simpler, you can get some steakums, okay, and just cook that up. And then you have steak. We're going to have shredded chicken. We're going to have bacon bits, but um, you know how I make my bacon bits. We just get that fresh, thick cut bacon, put a little pepper on there, put it in the oven, you know, and let it go. Or you can put it on the stove, which is which I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cube it up and then put it on the stove and let that cook through. So chicken, shredded chicken, bacon. My cousin's gonna bring um, some shrimp. We're gonna have some sauteed shrimp that can go on top as well. Um, we're gonna have uh, sour cream, chives, cheese, broccoli, um, salad toppers. Uh, we're gonna have salad as well. 
croutons and olives and all that kind of stuff. Um, what else do you put on your potato? There's a plethora of things that you could do. You got to make sure you put that lovely butter on top when it just come out the oven. Oh, glory. Okay. You got to do it. That's the that's like the best part. Y'all know me and butter got a whole history. Me and butter is just like butter and uh and Paula Dean. You know, Paula Dean, her blood is butter. So I guess my blood is butter too. <laughs> Alright, we're almost finished this last moment of chicken shredage. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna eat that piece right now. <laughs> All right, so we've shredded our chicken. Now we're just gonna let it cool. All we have to do is just pop it in the microwave tomorrow to warm it up, or you can put it on the stove in a pan and just. Warm it through, whatever you want to do. I think I would do the pan with a little butter. Okay. And look at that. That was that was three chicken breasts. And we have a nice little bowl. Everyone, you don't have to hold, put a whole chicken breast on your on your. Um, on your um, potato. Mm-hmm. Come on, Holy Ghost. Oh, we have beautiful shredded chicken. A nice whole bowl. Look at that. That was. This is three chicken breasts. Beautiful. That's done. have a bowl here. All right. Oh, let me move my jar out the way. Y'all didn't tell me the jar was in the way. All right. So to our bowl, we're going to add our celery. And we'll have a lot of onions. We're not going to put all of that onion. Do that, honey. Our onion, and then we have our chicken that's cubed. Cubed chicken. onion, chicken in the bowl. Let's just toss that around. Get that all incorporated. Incorporate it dry. And then we'll add the mayonnaise and things. Okay. That smells good. Okay, we have some pimentos. I'm going to pour a little bit of the liquid out. jar is so small I can't get a grip and y'all I have no strength because I've been because I've been cutting wood chopping wood so I don't I don't have the strength to open the, to open the jar oh my goodness what are your tricks to open the jar because when you don't got no strength there we go you just tap the tap the edge okay I'm gonna pour
have a few paper towels, I'm going to put a little bit of our mentos on this so that we can drain them off. We don't want them super wet. <gasps> don't want okay these are fermentos all right just want that red red color in there it's not a harsh flavor just scrape them off with a paper towel once you once you've um, pat them dry because we don't want all that liquid in there we want it dry because me moving this around will shred that chicken a little bit and then that will further the cubes okay so if you don't get a cube you still get some chicken does that make sense okay did y'all see that let's put the top on that well that smells that smells good so far okay so a little pimento a little oh um onion, a little celery, relish, and we're dry doing, we're dry mixing this so that if it, the chicken shreds a little bit, then that just furthers the moment around. You have cubes and then you have a little shredded. Can I, can I just take a handful of the shredded and put it in there? Okay. A handful of the shredded chicken okay same flavors we oven roasted those chickens all together so we have shredded and then we have um, cubed chicken in here okay just make sure all that goodness gets in there all right and then we're gonna do a little squeeze we don't need a lot I don't like mustard, okay? I like honey mustard, but I don't like regular mustard, but I will eat I will eat a spoonful of mustard when I have a cramp, when I have a, a Charlie horse. It will take it away, I promise. Okay, a little mustard. Incorporate. Okay. And then the last moment, Okay. Mustard. Okay. Again, we have uh, minced celery, onion. We have some pimentos, and that's that's what that is right here. Pimentos. Okay. We have some sweet relish. Okay. Sweet relish. We have mustard. Okay, um, we roasted our chicken in the oven. Remember we did pep smoked paprika, um, salt, kosher salt, coarse black pepper. We olive oiled it. We uh, rubbed our parsley flakes um, and got a little powder. Um, we did some Montreal chicken seasoning from McCormick. And this is a new... Mayonnaise. Do we have a mayonnaise in here first? 
don't want this to be overly mayonnaise -y. That's what we don't want. Do a small portion and then add mayonnaise. You know, it's not a mayonnaise salad. Okay, it's a chicken salad, not a mayonnaise salad. The mayonnaise just kind of pulls everybody together and gives it moisture. Okay? I think that's where we get a little confused. Okay, it's not a mayonnaise salad. It's a chicken salad. A little bit more. Now what I what I do is I put a little um, I put a little sugar in mine just to cut and help the flavor. Okay, we have sweet relish in here, so we're gonna taste this first. We're gonna taste it first. So we got cubes, and then we have shredded, but then also mixing it will help shred up those cubes a little bit. So you have bigger chunks and then you have thinner chunks. chicken salad. Okay, so let me show you that we do still have large pieces in here. So this is a large cube, but then as you're mixing it, it becomes the shredded moment. So this is a large cube. Okay. Size the breads for delicious appetizers, party appetizers by S. Rawson since 1909. Okay, that's what this looks like. I got it from, again, I went to Food Lion. So this is what I have. Okay, and this is, uh, uh, do we have a, a better description, honey? Oh, 
Hold on. This is pumpernickel. Okay, a little pumpernickel. Toast these up, but for now, we just gonna do a little bit of this right here. Mm -hmm. Gotta make sure. <laughs> gotta make sure it's enough on there. Dun dun dun. -dun. Da, da, da. I think if you toast it, it'll be great. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, Glory. Okay. Okay. I'm done. Get here. I want to taste. I want to toast it. Butter and toast. Let me do it right now. I'm gonna do it right now. Please hold. Please hold. nickel slices like this and then we got one two three four five six one in the center Second, while that's happening, 
we're going to close these up.
spread that on there like that. Where's my knife at? This, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna slice this. This, to, um, this is not a tomato, this is a grape. Okay, so I sliced that. Can I show y'all? Um, I turned it off. I sliced it. Okay. What's up, Taylor? How are you? Okay, so we have our. Oh, Michael's it died. We have a crisp, a pumpernickel crisp. We just made the chicken salad from our roasted chicken that we put in the oven. All right, and then we just sliced some um, some grapes. We're gonna, we're gonna lay that politely. Oh. Come on. Mm. Okay, for the crunch. Mm hmm. This is so good. Hold on. Mm. My Oscar, I'm gonna bring you something. Hold on. Let me, um. Let me slice another one. So extra. Okay. Now we're going to. Pumpernickel slice. That's a little. Chicken salad. Evenly dispersed. Y'all got to go do work after this. Work, 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 work. Okay. Then we have our lovely grapes slices. Four corners of the world. That's what it is, okay? These grapes are so freaking good, okay? Chicken slice on a pumpernickel um, piece of uh, toast, chicken salad, sliced grapes. Hold on, you wanna taste it? Mm. Okay, let's Did you make it? What's up, Brandon? No, this is chicken salad. Okay, so what we did, children, we uh, roasted our own chicken in the oven. Okay, remember we, we dried our chicken off. Okay, and then we used smoked paprika. Okay, girl, thank you. We used smoked paprika. Um, onion powder, garlic powder, uh, kosher salt, coarse black pepper. Um, we put the olive oil on the chicken first. Okay. And remember, we only season one side. So if you're heavy handed on your seasoning, only season one side. So we did. Uh, we dried our chicken off. And then we put it on a, on a cookie rack on a, on a pan. Olive oil. And then you put your seasonings. So we only season one side. And then we rub the chicken on one another so that the seasoning is evenly dispersed. We use smoked paprika. That's what this is. Smoked paprika, onion powder, garlic powder. Again, we use extra virgin olive oil. We used kosher salt. And we use coarse black pepper. And then we use uh, this McCormick seasoning, Montreal seasoning. Okay. Um, we put that in the oven, 350, um, and let that cook through. And what I do is I just touch it. I, that's how I judge, okay? Take it out. While it's still warm, we shredded the chicken, 
Okay, don't overcook it. Let it be dry. We shredded the chicken. Okay, and then we put it in a bowl. And we added um, minced garlic, minced celery, um, some pimentos. Okay, mayonnaise, mustard, relish, a little sugar to cut through that uh, flavor. Mix it, incorporate it. We toasted some pumpernickel slices. Then we have these lovely autumn crisp, ooh Jesus, some autumn crisp uh, grapes. And what we're gonna do, Isha, is with your knife, we're just gonna do some polite slices of autumn crisp grapes. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. And that's what my slices look like. All right, that's a grape. All right, and then we're just gonna put that on to the toast. Dun dun dun. Cause these these are the best snack. Autumn crisp. They're nice. They have the best. They have the best bite when they're cold. They're so good and they're so sweet. They're so good right now. So four autumn crisp grapes. That light is super bright, y'all. Let me see if I can put the camera back over top of me. Um, oh. So these are autumn crisp grapes with a little chicken salad and the pumpernickel slice. Okay, and I'm going to take that back off. And we're just going to eat it. Am I nervous? No, I'm not nervous. But I have been drinking. <laughs> okay? I'm not nervous at all. I am hungry. And I am drinking. My name is Mike Jones. All day, every day. I'm not a professional cook. I love to cook at home. I have a very large family. If you're just if you're just tuning in, magically, I just had a whole history lesson with my fam no with my mother. Uh, my mother was on just a few moments ago, and we talked about a lot of um, a lot of history moments. So, and y'all will get to see my twin. Okay. We have our trash bucket. It's just off to the side. Normally it's over here. My grandmother's picture is up because we were talking about my grandma. This is Charlotte. We call her Sing Girl, y'all. Go back and look at the video. And also, hold on. Let me help you. And let me watch you do it right now. Go ahead and like and share this video. Maybe subscribe. Click the bell. Go ahead and, and share it with your friends. Come on, Glory. Um, A little sauced. Hey, come on, Glory. It's Chapalante. Okay, roll your boat. A little sauce, and we might. What, y'all? I was a little, a little sauce, and I tipped my um. Is that no? This is my grandmother. Okay. Yes, for G Ma. Da, 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 da. Okay. I'm gonna show y'all my drink because <laughs> I accidentally tipped my my jar over, and uh, and <laughs> I wasted it down the sink. The rest, it was only a little bit, but you know. Okay, so this is my drink. If I can reach it, if I can reach it. Oh. All right, a little, a little, don't judge my drink. Don't, don't do it. Don't judge it. Just, just be appreciative, okay? So what we're gonna do? We got some um, crystal light wild straw wild strawberry. Okay, put it in there. Okay, put it put it in there. Get in there. All right. 
throw it in the trash bowl. We have some. Oh, come on, glory. Okay. Pineapple juice. Let me um turn my camera on so I can show you my ingredients up close. Okay. We have. Oh, oh stay there, Charlotte. Girl. Come on, glory. Um, just pineapple, pineapple juice. And that's what this looks like right here. Just pineapple, <laughs> pineapple juice. And we're going to pour a little bit of that. Do I like fish? I do like fish sticks, but I have not had, um, I have not had fish sticks in a long time. Okay. But I did make, oh, let me finish this. I did make, um, a fish ball. Not on here, but it was really good. Mmm. That's so good. A little pineapple juice. A little orange juice. Simply. Now the rest of the way, honey. You know what it is, cause, <laughs> cause it's in a. First of all, it's an amazing job. Second of all, it's crystal clear. Uh, have you caught on yet? Come on, glory. I am from Richmond, Virginia. Do I have a twang? Cause I don't know. I just hear myself talking. I'm, I'm like normal. Um, but I, do I have a country twang? I don't know. You tell me. Okay, this is the good stuff. I don't call it what it is, but I do tell you what flavor it is. It's peach flavored. And it is so good. It's so smooth. It is the it is the bee's knees, honey. Okay. Come on and roll your boat. We're gonna just top that off the rest of the way. In this lovely mason. In this lovely mason jar. From one mason jar to another. Hey, hey, hey. You are my brother. Come on, glory. Hey, roll your boat. Okay. I make, y'all, and this is why I said don't judge my life because I make the same drink every time. And what is it? Delicious. I don't need nothing else. Oh, oh I don't have the red stuff. I normally put, um, I normally put strawberry daiquiri, um, um, mix in here. And this is normally what I use to give it that red color. Well, we ain't got that today because we just made a drink before this one. Okay, and we finished it off. So, that's done. So we're just gonna go very simple. We're gonna put this top on here. And, uh, okay, Lord. <laughs> Come on, Taylor, you better, you better catch on up, Jesus. You got it. Hello, glory. That's what it is. It's so good. It's so good. Taylor, where are you from? Where in the country are you? Or where in the world are you? Okay, come on, Glory. Hello? We got to keep eating. Because we put it on the plate. A little chicken salad on a, on a pumpernickel. A little toast. Hold on. I won't go to do the, the, the slices of... I was just going to eat them. But because they so good, I'm slicing these lovely autumn crisp um, grapes on this jank. Come on, Glory. Isha. <laughs> Isha Palante, moving forward. That's what it means if you're just joining in. If you ain't hear me say it before, the phrases are Isha, Isha Palante, Roya Boat. Okay, come on, Glory. Uh, what else? What else do I say? I don't know. Okay, this is what it is. This is what it is. Where you at? Right here. Come on. A little chicken salad with a little crisp, autumn crisp grape on a. Come on, Michael. Do we not have our life together? Is the drink on us? I think the drink is on us. <laughs> I think it's there. Okay. Hello. Stay on the. 
You're from Brazil. Hello, Brazil. Come on. Hello, glory. Isha. Come on. Come on, Canada. We're, come on. Okay. Mm. Oh. No. <laughs> oh. Come on, glory. Just eat it. It's so good. Y'all. And what we did, these are the S. Rosen. Let me take them out of the pack because I put it in the pack and I put it in a Ziploc bag. These are the crisps that we're using. Get out the way. Okay. Party crisp. Party entertainers. They're pumpernickel. I went to Food Lion. Okay. And all I did was I put it in a cast iron pan. Let me show you my pan. I cook with a lot of butter. So if you know Paula Dean, then you know me. Okay. <laughs> a lot of butter. I use my cast iron pan, put some butter in the pan. Then I put some minced garlic down in the pan. Let that warm through. Okay. Then you put your pumpernickel slices down in there. Ba -ba -ba -da -da. Okay. Um, let them toast up. Then you have like a little garlic pumpernickel slice. Put your put your chicken salad on top. Huh. Okay, not ruined. Delicious. Delicioso. Okay. I'm gonna get my mom to bring the to make this tuna, this tuna sandwich that she made. Okay, because I didn't ask for it like two, three times. Two times, two times this week. And you got your autumn crisp. Y'all, these, these grapes are so good. Get you a little few slices. We got four slices. Four corners of a square. Come on, glory. Oh, well, I'm sorry that you feel that way, Brandon. But what we don't eat is dog food and or newspaper. So what you can't do is that, glory. All right, but nonetheless, we thank you so much for your commentary, Isha Palante. Okay? Okay, somebody got to be negative, and maybe it was you today. But nonetheless, we're going to keep moving forward, because what I know is it's delicioso, por favor. Yes, please, and thank you. Um, this is very good. Okay? Mm-hmm. So a little chicken salad. I'm sorry you feel this way. Okay. Some people just um, just magically wake up one morning and say, hey, I want to be a negative person today. So, I'm sorry that you feel that way. You don't have to eat it. You didn't make it. I did, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to eat it. Come on, glory. Because it's good. No, that's what you eat. Sorry that I read it wrong. Um, well, I hope you don't. I hope you don't eat that in real life. I hope you eat regular food because regular food is good for you. Um, okay. Hold on. What I'm just gonna do is put this grape in my mouth because I'm tired of cutting them up. Okay. No, not chicken food, not f chicken food, not, f not dog food. Y'all, okay, let me show you the great box real quick. And then I'm going to do some work before I go to bed. Autumn crisp, premium, okay, seedless grapes. They're so, they're so good. The texture of this grape, y'all, it will bless your life. It's the best grape ever. Okay? It's, it, like it says, it's a crisp bite. Okay? They're so sweet. When they're super cold, hello, somebody. So, again, we made some shredded chicken. We were doing some prep for Sunday dinner tomorrow. All right? 
and we're gonna have tomorrow because we normally have um, we normally have a family dinner. Um, so tomorrow's menu is um, a potato bar. So you you do your potatoes like normal. Um, russet potatoes, put them in the oven, clean them off, put them in the oven, let them cook through, split them, then you can um, go to the bar and uh, put in there what you care for. So we're going to have um, chives, uh, broccoli, um, cheese, um, we shredded some chicken, this, this is three chicken breasts that we put in the oven. Um, and it's the same chicken breast that's in our chicken salad. Put it in the oven, then we shredded it up. We're gonna put this in the refrigerator and just warm it back through on tomorrow. We're gonna have bacon bits, but we're gonna have fresh bacon bits. So we're gonna cut, cube the bacon, put it in the pan for a little coarse, uh, coarse black pepper, cook that through. And we're gonna have some, um, um, some pe uh, pepper, some shrimp, as well so our toppings will be shrimp shredded chicken oh and we have some um, I have some extra pork chops in there so we'll cube those up and cook those and you can sprinkle a little pork chop on top of there on top of your potato um, I think I said broccoli some cheese some chives some sour cream um, and whatever else we have salad topper I'm like yeah our short over here because that light is super bright. Salad topper. So I like salad topper on top of my on my potatoes. Butter. Yes. Okay. I'm gone because I've been on here for quite a minute. Okay, and I'm about over it because um it's eleven o'clock and I need to do a little work before I go to bed. I hope y'all enjoyed my whole family history moment. Again, my name is Mike Jones. I love you a bushel and a peck and a hug about your neck. Yes, I do. Come on, glory. Um, get some rest. Yeah. Take care of yourselves. And take care of your ne your neighbors by wearing your mask and all that kind of stuff. And we'll try it again tomorrow. Yeah. And let God do the rest. I'm done. I love you a bushel and a peck. Y'all go get some rest. I'll talk to y'all soon. All right? Bye.